afternoon, everybody. I hope all of you are well and happy. So before we start the Dharma class, everybody be relax physically mentally be relax try to have a space for dharma in your mind because since we get up morning till now somehow everybody been busy therefore our money is full of you know different thoughts therefore it is so important to have a enough space or enough place for dharma therefore at the beginning everybody please concentrate about your breathing in and out Thank you. Second, so this is a Dharma class, a lesson about Dharma. Therefore, at the beginning, it is so important to have pure motivation motivation for achieving only liberation or achieving for Buddhahood or motivation for reducing all the negative thoughts or reducing all the negative actions also cultivate the positive mental attitudes, cultivating great compassion, cultivating love towards all sentient beings. Therefore, please everybody generate pure motivation, mainly motivation for becoming Buddha, achieving fully enlightened state. Please cultivate bodhicitta.
only the cultivation of bodhicitta <clears throat> is not sufficient, not, not enough to achieve Buddhahood. Therefore, second, we need to practice the six perfections, the six Parjana Paramitas. Just having the bodhicitta is look like you have a very strong aspiration, strong motivation for becoming Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. But without practicing bodhicitta, you really cannot, we cannot achieve Buddha, we really cannot move furthermore. Therefore, practicing six perfection is very important for achieving Buddhahood or achieving liberation. Not only Buddhahood and liberation, also in order to achieve happy life in next life, also we need to practice the six perfections. Therefore, the last Saturday, we discuss, we studied how, how much it is important to practice the six perfection for just for achieving, you know, happy life. In order to be happy, have a happy life, we must have the healthy life, the healthy body. The healthy life, the highest state of life is depending on practicing ethical disciplines. Born into human life, higher realms, ethical discipline is the most important cause to achieve healthy life. It is just born into a human. Also, it doesn't mean we can have a happy life. Second, we need the good resources like a food, house, you know, like good job, all of them depend on practicing the generosity. Not only that, in order to have the excellent components excellent friends are on you. Also, we need to practice the patience. Therefore, generosity, ethical discipline, then patience. Three practices are very important as a lay person. Then, the joy effort. If you only practice the four perfections, then this can have happy life, but only practicing the four perfection, we cannot achieve liberation, we cannot achieve Buddhahood as well. Therefore, please everybody must remember, if you only practice the first four perfections, this practicing four perfection can be cause 
to arise, increase our negative thoughts. Therefore, the number fifth, we need to practice the meditative, or we need to practice the you know the mindfulness. When we practice the, the fifth perfection, which is the, the mindfulness or meditative concentration, it helps to reduce the negative thoughts. It is going to help to minimize all the negative thoughts. But without practicing the, uh, the wisdom, which is realizes emptiness, we cannot be free from suffering. We cannot be free from ignorance. Therefore, in order to achieve liberation, in order to achieve Buddhahood, we need to practice the six perfections. Within the six, the first three hours, very stable, for the lay person. Within the six, the last three, the practice of joy effort, practice of mindfulness, the practice of wisdom are more stable, you know, stable for the, the, the renowns or uh, the sanghas. Still, the sangha or also must practice the first, the four perfections. As a lay person, the first three are very stable for lay person. The lay person also must practice the, you know, the rest, the three perfections. So each of the perfection as a particular power to reduce the negative thoughts. The practicing generosity reduce attachment, ego. Practicing ethical discipline have a particular power to restrain from any kinds of negative thoughts, particularly attachment, anger, hatred. The practicing patience is a very particular practice to control our anger, control our hatred. Practicing joy effort as a unique power to reduce the laziness, the laziness. In our life, we can see we don't have much progress in our Dharma practice because we've been lazy to practicing Dharma, to you know, study, Dharma because we have the lazy mind. In order to overcome, in order to free from the laziness, then we need to practice the joy effort, not just effort, we say joy effort. Then the practicing the mindfulness, the single pointed meditation has a very unique power to surprise, to fully reduce the negative thoughts. Only having the, you know, the, the single pointed meditation, it doesn't help you, us to overcome from the ignorance. Therefore, the number seven, it is so important to practice 
the wisdom. Wisdom has a different levels. Knowing the right and wrong is also one of one kind of wisdom. Realizing impermanent, impermanence, also kind of wisdom. Understanding the essenceless, essenceless, because we always think everything has a particular essence. Therefore, we our mind is attached on it, our mind clinging on the things because we can see, we can feel that something is very uniqueness, like an essence. Realizing the essenceless, also kind of wisdom. Within the wisdom, the most important wisdom is the mind, the consciousness, which is realized emptiness, is the direct antidote to eliminate the ignorance. Therefore, so we have to practice six perfection after we uh, cultivate Bodhicitta. So this this one, you know, we learned in the last, I think, Saturday. And also, whenever I we have a Dharma class, I always request all of our Dharma friend, whatever we learn, study, hear from, you know, like different teachers. We must put into practice. We always try to have a progress in our practice. Having progress or not, how we know for you very easy to reduce, you know, you, you have become very easy person to reduce negative thoughts. That means your practice has a, you know, great progress. If you have a less attachment with your belongings, with your friends and family, if you have, if you feel I have a less attachment that means you have a good progress in your practice, in your study. Then how we know I have a good progress for understanding of impermanence. I'm not talking about the, the gross impermanence, the subtle impermanence. If you, for you very easy to you know, easy to give a forgiveness. Then you can have a good progress. You have a, you know, good understanding of, you know, the subtlety, subtle impermanence. Then how we know I have a good, pro good progress in practice of you know, the pure love, the pure compassion. If you have a equal, equal love and compassion towards your dear one and your enemy, that means you have a great progress in practice of pure love and compassion. If you feel I can have a good compassion and love towards my dear one, my closer one. Difficult to have a pure love and compassion towards, you know, the strange or indifferent person or enemy. That means you don't have a, you know, good progress in practice of pure love and compassion. So please don't forget all the Mahayana 
practices rooted by great compassion and love. Also, please don't forget the compassion is a very important at the beginning of the Mahayan practice. It is very important in the between or in middle before you become a Buddha. Also, the great compassion is very important after we, you know, we become a Buddha. So many people, they claim themselves, they consider themselves, I am Mahayan practitioner, practitioner. I follow Mahayan teaching but they don't have the great compassion, the great love, it's a very contradiction. Therefore, please everybody, you know, practice compassion, love, as much as you can at the beginning. Then, second, very easy to cultivate bodhicitta. When you fully you know, accomplish bodhicitta, then you never feel tiredness to practice passion, practice benefit for others. So please must remember in you know, all the steps and also many our Dharma friends are always very eager, very, you know, like a excited, be excited to practice the higher yoga tantrayana. It is good to have a very strong excitement, strong desire for practicing higher yoga tantrayana. Also must remember, without Buddhicitta, the higher yoga tantrayana practice, you know, can be nothing. Because whether you enter into Sutra Mahayana and Vajra Mahayana, the only intense is the Bodhicitta. So this is we, you know, uh, we study in the past. Also, particularly we study how we cultivate Bodhicitta. There's a two different ways, seven cause and effects, and so exchanging, exchanging seven and other. So today we study about the six perfections. <clears throat> Page number. Page number 105. The fixed number of perfection based on fulfilling the two ends. If you follow if you are happy to practice the, the Hinayan path, then still you need to practice the six perfections. Also, if you, you wish to be Buddha, again, we need to practice the six perfections. Therefore, fulfilling the true ends. When someone is such as a life of higher stood, learn the Bodhisattva's deeds. These activities are comprehensively categorized as a true. What are the true? Those which fulfill your own aims and those which fulfill other aims, aims or other. Therefore, there is a fixed number of perfection based on fulfilling the true aims. True aims. So always remember in your mind the Mahayan practitioner who follow the Bodhisattva paths, they always wish to fulfill the two aims. Your own aims, aims for other, other aims. When you think about the two aims, in order to fulfill your own aim, you no need to put the separate effort. You no need separate practice. When you practice great compassion, bodhicitta with the six perfections, then you fulfill your own aim. No need 
no need separate practice. The full, the fulfill the aims of other you must first. Now what? How? What is the you know the steps? What is the kind of the order? How to practice the six perfections? At the beginning, you can see. To fulfill the aim of others, you must first help them with the material goods. In order to benefit others, first you need to bring them closer to you. Try to be friend with them. Therefore, first the generosity is very important. Since no benefit will come from the generosity in uh, a company's by harmfulness towards living beings. So you need ethical discipline, right? Generosity is very important to bring others closer to you. When they, they come closer to you, then you can benefit for them. But the generosity must be very pure, you know, non-harmful things. Therefore, second, you need to practice ethical discipline in order to you know pure the generosity ethical discipline as a which has a great purpose for other in that is the state of the des desisting from harm to others and the cause of such as harm after practice generosity the ethical discipline will become very important to bring this to the till full development, you also need patience. This disregard the harm done to you. Let's say, you know, you give something to someone with a sense of benefits. The generosity, the cause, the thing which you're going to give it come from the harmful way, then the practice in generosity cannot be very pure. Or you give something to someone, it become very harmful for them, then the, the generosity cannot be very pure. In order to have a pure generosity, you need to practice ethical discipline. The ethical discipline, the restraint, the negative thoughts. Then, yes, you practice uh, the pure generosity. You have the pure ethical discipline. If you don't, if you don't have a patience, patience, then somebody harm you, then you cannot practice generosity. You cannot practice ethical discipline. Therefore, the third step, the step number three, we need to practice patience. Here, look at, to bring this to its full development, you also need patience that disregard the harm done to you. For if you are impatient with harm and retaliate at a time or two, you will not attend pure ethical discipline. So, when we practice Dharma, the practicing passion is very important, particularly. So, we follow the Mahayan tradition, we follow the, the Bodhisattva path, we practice the Bodhicitta, therefore, practicing passion is very important. If you don't have a patience, then you're going to abandon the living being, even though you're going to abandon a one living being. Then there's a danger to weaken your bodhicitta, weaken your great compassion, right? Therefore, first, pure generosity. The generosity becomes pure when you have a pure ethical discipline. The generosity, ethical discipline becomes very pure if you're able to practice the patience. Patience. Otherwise, 
you know, the generosity, ethical discipline cannot be very complete patience. When you do not retaliate because of your patience, you prevent others from the accumulating a great amount of sins and bring them to the virtues by inspiring them with your patience. So therefore, many of our Dharma friends always ask how I can you know, give advice to others, how I can teach Dharma to my friends. And I said, if you really wish to teach Dharma, if you really want to give a, a good advice, teach Dharma, the give good advice through your actions actions. Somebody harm you, if you are very patient, not going to retaliate, retaliate, then people can see, oh, I harm, you know, the him or her. Him or her doesn't get angry how he's come. Then they know you have been practicing the Buddhist path. You have been practicing Dharma. You follow Dharma. Then somebody harm you, you're not going to retaliate. You stop to retaliate. Then the person not going to harm you a second time. Then you stop the person accumulating you know, continuously negative actions. Also the people can be inspired to see your actions. Be patient, be compassion, be open mind, be, you know, like a, a good heart. There's a, they, then, you know, uh, the, the person can have uh, two benefits. One, the person not going to accumulate, you know, continuously the negative action. Second, the person can be aspired by your actions. Therefore, you know, sometimes, you know, very unfortunate. I said many times, I repeat again, Someone before follow Dharma, before you know, meet a, like a monks and nuns, before they go to any like Buddhist center, like Buddhist temple, they are very compassionate person, they are very happy person, they are very open-minded person. Since the person meet a like a Dharma teacher or guru, since the person, you know, visiting uh, different temples, Buddhist temple, different Buddhist center, then the person has changed. Before the person was very happy, since the person became very un unhappy. Before the person was very open-minded, since then the person became very close-minded. Before the person was very pure heart, very compassion, they never discriminate. Since a person, you know, visit the temple, Buddhist temple, Buddhist society, Buddhist center, then the person become very discriminate. Those are, you know, very unfortunate. Therefore, the more you visit Dharma center, the more you become more open-minded. The more you see, see or meet like a Buddhist teacher, the more you become compassionate, more open mind, more pure, more forgiveness. Otherwise, you know, since you follow Dharma, if you become very negative person, this means you are taking the important medicine as a poison. It's a poison. We should we should not be like that. Any of us should not be like that. Also make sure your, you know, your Dharma knowledge, your knowledge of Dharma, your experience of Dharma must be caused to increase your positive thoughts. Never, thought, never to be caused to increase your negative thoughts. Again, since you have a better knowledge of Dharma, 
you you have you you study for many years you study dharma for many years everything just cause to increase your ego increase your attachment increase the discrimination with you know your uh, fellow brother and sister is still something the important medicine supposed to elevate uh, supposed to e liberate what do you call you supposed to cause to reduce the sickness but the most important medicine increase the sickness is no good at all therefore look at here if you practice passion then the person not going to accumulate the negative action continuously therefore it is so important to be patience patience and also when you think how i can be patience every time when you think when you feel my anger is moving arising is you know increase you feel anger is start to is start started to increase or arising suddenly you must remember the anger always produce the negative consequences the all anger always destroy it. your happiness your peace of mind also slowly the anger destroy it. your your relationship your families or friendship your friends you know therefore must remember the consequence of anger and be patient be patient mean you know it doesn't mean just be quiet no not the anger let it arise patient mean you reduce the anger not let it arise you become very angry but just be quiet it doesn't mean you are very patient no you become very impatient because anger already arise arise you know high degree therefore you know practice patience is very important particularly you know practicing uh, the mahayan path the following the mahayan tradition patience right patience then next is look at prevent other from the accumulating great amount of sins and bring them to the virtues by inspiring them with your patience so this practice has a great purpose for others you turn your own aim the bliss of liberation through the power of wisdom so liberation of buddhahood can be achieved through the practice of wisdom since you will not attend this with the distracted mind you must set your mind in the meditative equipoise by means of meditative civilization uh, obtaining mental service able so now you can see so until the patience practicing patience is just very general practice you are not talking about achieving liberation then second achieving the you know liberation the bliss of liberation also must achieve through the the power of wisdom then the power of wisdom also very much you know depend on the uh, uh, the meditative equipoise because if you don't have the meditative equipoise you have a distracted mind distracted mind right therefore after you relax emptiness continuously you need to meditate on emptiness if you're not able to do meditation then we have always the distracted mind therefore in order to complete the practice of wisdom also we need to practice the meditative eco points otherwise we cannot control the dis distracted mind so how we can, can well, how we can have the you know how we can control the distracted mind again 
you know, our mind always goes around with the two, condi two different conditions. One, with the attachment. If you have a strong attachment of your food, you know, food or drink, so when you try to do meditation, suddenly you remember for eating food, drinking, you know, coffee and tea. This happened because of the strong attachment, because of the strong desire. Desire. So therefore, again, in order to have the, you know, the right mindfulness, we need to control the attachment. If you have a less attachment, then you have a less the distracted mind. Therefore, in order to complete the practice of wisdom, we need to practice uh, the single pointed meditation or you know uh, the meditative equipoise. How? By means of meditative stabilization, obtaining a mental service ability wherein you in, intentionally sit your attention on any object of meditation. Since a lazy person does not produce this, you need joy, perseverance, day and night. That never lack uh, skillness. So this is the basis of the other perfections. Now look at, with the, in order to have a complete the five perfections, then we need to practice the joy effort. We need, we need the joyous perseverance day and night. Every time, day and night. So this is, I think, mainly explain how it is important to practice the six perfection in order to achieve, fulfill others, you know, other aims. Then in the then there's a quotations. So we skip the, uh, the quotation. In these six, there is no complete fulfillment of other aims. The, the mention of civilization and liberation. This is nothing. Now we just move the second uh, number, the C, page number one zero seven. The fixed number of perfection based on perf uh, perfecting the completion fulfilling of others' aims. You first rel relieve others' poverty by giving away the material good, good, goods. The poverty actually in English is mainly, you know, poverty about food and clothes. But Tibetan we say here, one second, huh? We divide the words of pongwa. Pongwa is lagging, lagging of something, lagging, pongwa, not only poverty. Lagging, lagging, you know, happiness, also kind of poverty. Lagging mental happiness, also, you know, kind of poverty. Or lagging food and clothes, also kind of the poverty. So in order to fulfill others, first relieves other poverty by giving away material goodness. Here Tibetan Thomas Zanzin Tarek Pongwa said. So he's mainly talking about practice of generosity. Then you do not harm to any living beings and addition are patient with harm done to you. So practice of generosity, then practicing ethical discipline, the practicing passion. Without becoming despite it, despite it, you are joyous, uh, joyous, uh, joyous, joy yourself, perseverant at the helping other who harm you. You depend on the military civilization. Inspire them through the dispelling super normal power and so forth. When they become the stable vessel for the teaching, you rely on the wisdom and giving good explanation. So this means you can see how we can, you know, fulfill other aims through practice of the 
six perfections. Therefore, every time after you cultivate Buddhichitta, then you must think, I follow the Mahayan path, I follow the Bodhisattva path. That means I must fulfill, you know, other ends, end for other. How I can fulfill other ends? Therefore, first, you just think about, you know, first I try to be close to everybody. How? First, you give her something. You give her material things, or you give her advice, you give her, you know, hand helping, then people become closer to you. It is not your aim to just be, you know, friend with them. Second, you want to teach Dharma. How you can, you know, continuously, you know, bring, you know, many people close to you, then you, have to, you must remember, I have to be patient. Otherwise, somebody come to closer to you for a few days, few months. If you are, you are, if you are very short temper, if you are a very angry person, the person go away. So, in order to bring them continuously, you know, close to you, then ethical discipline, patience, very important. If you have a, these three qualities, then the the people who lives around you, the people who closer to you they will be inspired by your actions. Then the person is very happy to listen to you, listen you, very happy to follow you. That means the person become, you know, you know, has a good condition to teach Dharma. Then thereby cut through their doubts and thereby bring them to liberations. So when people come closer to you, then you can teach Dharma. So in order to teach Dharma, make sure you have the good knowledge, you have the, the right understanding of Dharma, not only understanding, make sure whatever you teach, first you practice yourself. First you practice compassion, then you can teach compassion. You practice passion, then you can teach, teach passion. Otherwise, we thought, you know, you are on. You are not applying all the practices. Then, if you try to teach them, then you, like me, become like a you know like a recorder. Just press. I have a voice. You can listen the voice. The voice doesn't have the power to transform your mind. Therefore, first you must practice yourself try to have an experience, then teach to other. There's doubt and thereby bring them to the liberation. Because you do all this, the perfection are the fixed as a sixth number to fulfill of other ends. The next one, the fixed number of perfection based on the subsuming the entire Mahayana. Look at. So therefore, when, when we think about, you know, how I can practice all the teachings, please always remember, teaching has a two meanings. One, the, the verbal teachings. Second is the actual meaning. All the meanings of the Buddha teachings include the Vajrayana teaching, all the contents, all the contents, the meaning, you can include into only six perfections. Very simple. Six perfections. Then the six perfection practice, you can include into two practices, practice of wisdom and methods methods. Therefore, many people, you know, when they read different books, Dharma books, when, when they attend, you know, like teaching from different master, then the people confuse how to practice the teaching. Therefore, here I think you must remember, 
uh, venerable, you know, like a pabunka in the liberation in your plum. is mentioned very clearly. First, you need, you know, few containers, few containers. Then you have a mop, for example, a rice container, the wheat containers, and the beans containers. You have a mop with the different containers. Right? The containers are look like practicing the six perfections. You have a six containers. Then when you listen teaching, you must know what the teacher is talking about. He's talking about generosity, ethical discipline, forgiveness, renunciation, buddhicitta. So when you must listen what he, is talk, what he or she is talking about, then you must know, oh, he or she is you know, teaching about compassion, put in the container, the meaning. Oh, he or she is talking about emptiness, is the wisdom. He or she is talking about patience, is a practice of patience. Therefore, in your mind, you must practice all the six perfections. Whenever you listen teaching, the teaching must relate it to one of the six perfections. Six perfection, right? Therefore, look, it's very simple. The fixed number of perfection based on the subsuming the entire Mahayana. Entire Mahayana. There are indifferent to resource because you are not attached to the those you have and not do not pursue those you lack how all the entire mahayana <clears throat> mahayan include into six perfection first not attachment first you need to learn you know detachment or non not non-attachment. Therefore, the generosity is the best antidote to reduce attachment. When you reduce attachment, you become detached with your belongings, include your body. So in order to learn how to be, you know, be non-attached person, practice generosity. Practicing generosity, not only talking about generous, about the material, the physical things. Practicing generosity about physical things. Practicing generosity about giving teaching. Practicing generosity about giving life. Right? Life. So, for most people, when they think about practicing generosity, they always refer to the giving the physical things. Not only that, also give a teaching, give a advice. You know, it's also included into practicing generosity. Also giving life. For example, in Singapore, you know, we have a good tradition to do the fish liberation. We say fish liberation, generous, you know, you know, liberation, liberate the beings. Also practice of generosity. So therefore, everything can happen if you become very non-attachment. Therefore, you look at, they are indifferent to resource because you are not attached to those you have, you have and do not pursue those you lack. You, if you have a, become very detachment person, whatever you have, it look like it's not your, because you don't, don't have a sense of attachment, right? Attachment. Then, if you become very non, you know, attachmentless person, then you're not going to put a lot of effort. The thing which you don't have. Then, if you have become very non-attachment person, then you can practice, you know, the pure generosity. Since you then have the ability to self-guide the precept, you adopt the respect, respect ethical discipline. 
because look at now you need to see the you know the point what is the relationship between practicing ethical discipline and practicing generosity because the practicing generosity is the way is the way to reduce attachment the practicing generosity is the way to become non attachment non attachment if you don't have any attachment to your belongings your position your name and fame then you become very pure ethical person you don't care about the thing which you have you are not very concerned thing which you don't have also you don't care about your you know position because in our life we can see you know we have been seeing so many people become very unethical because of the attachment particularly if you have a high position in the society in the monastery in the company if you have a high position then you are always worry somebody will take your position right it's okay to have a high position in society in company in your family in your society in mono is is okay to have a high position but should not have a attachment with your your posi your high position once you have attachment you don't let it go you always want to help you know keep the position then someone become famous more you know intelligent then you become you know you you have a fighting or oh, in the worst thing you kill others because of the attachment clear attachment therefore if you are, let's see somebody knocking the door or you i think just somebody <clears throat> non attachment is the most important you know pre condition to practice the pure ethical discipline non attach now you can see the you know the the steps the link generosity ethical discipline so good then you do not harm to any living beings and in addition are patient with harm do not harm done to you without becoming disparaged to your joyously perseverance then if you have become very pure ethical person then second you need to practice patience somebody harm you make sure you you know not re harm no harm back to them be patience then joy effort joyously perseverance and helping those who harm you so if you be patient you know you somebody harm you you don't get angry you don't get upset you never have you never have a motivation to you know re you know harm back to them then still you continuously to benefit the harm you know who harm you then continuously you can practice the the joy effort so also i think here i want to say something when we think about you know practicing patience we think it's so difficult to be patient but when you really think you know very uh be on us if you think about whom you cannot be patient simply most of us you know living in singapore in singapore we have a you know 5 to 6 million people within the 5 6 million people who always meet you how many people you know thousand maybe not most of us know maybe around you know let's say 50 to 300 maybe 50 to 500 
within the 50, from 50 to 500 people, most of people are okay with you. You are friend with them, they are friend with you, you have a you know good friendship. You no need to practice patience because they never harm you, you're not going to harm them. So within the 500 people, from 50 to 500, maybe you have only, only like 10 people, 10 people. I don't think you have, a, you know, more than 10 enemy around you. The people who are living in like you know, Europe, like America, Africa, most of the Asian country, we don't have any link, connection. You know, we don't have to practice patience particularly for them. So among the 10 people, let's say everybody has a 10 enemy who, who always, whom, whom always you are very unhappy, right? Now, within the 10 people, you should think why I am not happy why I cannot be patient with this person, that person. You need to think the reasoning. You need to think the condition. Then most of the reasoning is kind of, you know, not, there's no solid reasoning. You always say, oh, he said bad thing about me. Oh, he harmed me, right? Tell me, you must remember here what uh, Chandrakirti said. Somebody already harm for you. If you harm back to them, it doesn't mean that the before the who which is harm you, you're not going to away. Therefore, when you have an enemy. If in, when you have a problem to practice passion to the particular person, you must think why I cannot be patient. For what reason behind it? Think the reason and is, if you have to be, you know, clear. You have to be clean, the angry towards the particular person, like around the 10 people. When you're able to clear the angry, towards 10 people, then you can practice compassion towards all sentient beings. Otherwise, the verbally, you say all mother sentient beings, you say verbally, but you always neglect, you know, the, the 10 people. Then your compassion cannot be complete. You cannot really cultivate bodhicitta. Therefore, practicing patience is very important. Also, you know, we have just few people to be with a, we have only few people who have, we have to be very patient. Therefore, we depend on material civilization and inspire them through the dispelling. Uh, sorry, I think you are the patient with the spirit of the living being. Entire Mahayana. So therefore, attach those you have, uh, uh, you have, and do not pursue those you lack. Since then, you have the ability to subgut precept, to adopt and respect ethical discipline. You are the patient with the suffering and come from the living beings and in inanimate things, and you are enthusiastic about the whatever virtues you set out or the cultivate. So you do not get disparate about the either of this. Again, when we think about you know suffering come from impatience. So being you know impatient with the living beings or non-living beings. So you are patient with the suffering that come from living beings and in inimitable things. There's been no living beings. You are the enthusiast. Then there's nothing too much to explain. Then you simple. You can think in you know, all the Mahayan 
part include into the six perfections. Within the six perfection, there's a order. First, generosity, the ethical discipline, then patience, then joy effort, then mindfulness, then wisdom. The next page number 108. The fixed number of perfection in terms of the, the completeness of the part or methods. I think this is uh, quite uh, important to remember. The fixed number of perfections in terms of the completeness of the part or methods. The part or methods for not being attached to the resource that are your position is generosity, right? So we have to be like non-attached to things can be a practice of generosity because you become free from attachment to your things by becoming habitual to the giving them away. This means the generosity is the methods becoming free from attachment. Clear? You have to say, practicing generosity is the method to free from attachment. Then the ethical discipline is the method for restraining yourself from the destruction of, destruction of trying to possess what you do not possess is the ethical discipline. That means whatever you have, whatever you already have, so we have an attachment. So we must be free from attachment, the belongings which is already have. How I can, how, how um, our mind can be free from attachment, the belongings which is we already have. That means practice the generosity. Now how my how our mind can be free from the things which we haven't have yet. That means ethical discipline. The methods of restraining yourself from the destruction of trying to possess what you do not possess is the ethical discipline. For when you maintaining a monk vow, monk's vow, you do not have all the destruction of making a life living. The methods for not abandoning living being is the patience. First, free from attachment, right? The practicing generosity is the methods. Free from attachment, the things which is I already have. Then ethical discipline is the methods to free our mind free from the things which is we haven't yet. Then the patience, the practicing patience is the methods for not abandoning living beings. Then the joy effort is the methods to increase the virtues. Then uh, The method of calculation uh, is for me too. The last days are two practices, practice of uh, mindfulness and practice of wisdom. The methods for clearing away the obscuration are the final two perfection because the meditative stabilization clear away the afflictions and the wisdom clear away the cognitive obscuration. That's part, right? That means the last two practices are the two, uh, two methods. One is the clearing away the afflictions. Second is the clear away the cognitive obscurations. That means we are talking about six methods for clearing away the six the negativities.
practicing generosity is methods to reduce attachment towards the thing which is already have. The ethical discipline is the methods to reduce the attachment, the things which you no have yet. Then the patience, practicing patience is the methods not to abandoning the living being, the sentient being. Then the joy effort is the methods to increase our virtues or practices. Then practicing the mindfulness, you know, the single pointed meditation is the methods to clear away the afflictive emotions or the negative thoughts. Then the wisdom is the methods to clear away the cognitive uh, obturations. Now you can see the six methods for reducing the six negativities. What time is it now? Oh. Next, we go to page number one zero nine. So, before we uh, start that, this one was remember. In order to fulfill your own aims, you need to practice the six perfection. In order to fulfill other aims, we need to practice the six perfections. And all the Mahayan path, all the Mahayan practices, subsuming into the six perfections. And the six Perfection is the particular method, particular means to reduce the six kinds of negativities. First, attachment. Second is a kind of hatred. So second is a yeah, um, generosity or oh. Second is particularly to reduce the attachment, the things which is haven't have yet. So how come when you practice ethical discipline, then you, you're going to reduce the attachment, the thing which is not have, not haven't had in your hand now? Because in your life, you know, in our life, we can see somebody are very hungry about thing which is not have yet. Therefore, in order to pursue the things which we haven't yet, then you need to, you know, so many times we need to against with our ethics. Therefore, if you are always be ethical person, ethical person, then you won't have a so strong attachment to something for you know the uh, the worldly things to achieve. Then patience is the mainly methods to reduce the angry anger and the hatred. Because if you are a very angry person, there's danger to abandon living beings. Then there's danger to weaken the bodhicitta. The joy effort mainly cause to increase the positive action or virtues. The mindfulness is the method, method to clear away the afflicted emotions. The wisdom is the method to clear away the cognitive obturations. Right? So this is how we can apply the six perfection as a method. Now the three trainings. The fixed number of perfection based on the three trainings. Again, all the Mahayan practices include into six perfections. All the, you know, the Mahayan, the Hinayan practices include progress into the three trainings. Trainings of ethical discipline, trainings of 
mindfulness, the trainings of wisdom. Now here, what you need to learn, the six perfection, how we can include into the three trainings. The nature of the training in ethical discipline is the practice of ethical discipline, right? The number one. Ethical discipline is the, the main important practice within the three trainings. The precondition of the training in the ethical discipline is the generosity. Because once you have generosity, that is indifferent to the resource. You can probably adopt ethical discipline. That means ethical discipline is one of the three training. Then the generosity becomes the precondition. Precondition. You can probably adopt the ethical discipline. But as to the training, ethical discipline is the patience. So in order to complete the ethical discipline, then we need to practice the patience. There's been the generosity is the precondition to practice ethical discipline. In order to maintain the ethical discipline, then the practice passion is the you know antidote to anger or hatred. This means generosity, practice of passion is the kind of most important cause to practice ethical discipline. Because the patient is not retaliating when scold, etc. Sub guide your uh, proper adopt the ethical discipline. The meditative uh, stabilization is the training of the mind, is the you know, third training, sorry, second training. The training of meditative concentration and wisdom is the training, is the wisdom. That means the last three is that, you know, like a, there's a uh, training of the meditative concentration, training of wisdom. Then what about the joy effort in the joyous perseverance? It is the, it, it is the include in all three trainings, right? Here, what you need to say is think simply, the six perfections practice must include into practice of three trainings. Number one, training of ethical discipline. Number two, training of mindfulness. Number four, three, training of wisdom. Now how you can include the rest of the three into practice of three mind trainings. Then generosity is the precondition to practice ethical discipline, right? Then practice passion is the most important kind of supporter to practice ethical discipline, patience. Then the last one, the, sorry, the number four, the joy effort can be included into, you know, into three. Therefore, simply you can think the six perfection practice include into three mind trainings. Mind trainings. And also here you must remember all the Buddha teachings. We, uh, we could agree into three baskets. Three basket. That, that, or three teaching. The Vinaya teaching, Abhidharma, and Sutra. Abhidharma basket, Sutra basket, the Vinaya baskets. The Vinaya teaching mainly contain how to practice ethical disciplines. Then the Abhidharma basket, the Abhidharma's teaching, the content mainly about the view, the wisdom. Then 
the sutra basket, the sutra teaching, mainly content. The content is mainly about in all the practices. Also, three of has order. First, ethical discipline. Second is the uh, mindfulness. Third is wisdom. Because when you practice ethical discipline, you are always, you know, control all the negative thoughts. You, you control, you not manifest very strongly. When you feel it's going to arise, you can surprise. Then second, top of the discipline, uh, ethical discipline, when you do the single pointed meditations, the mindfulness, then you further reduce the afflictive emotions. It look like you don't have any more. You fully reduce until the root, root cannot manifest anymore because you have a very powerful, you know, the mindfulness. Then, but still you have the root, you know, all the root is still there. You, you reduce anger, fully reduce, but the root is there. You fully reduce attachment, the root is still there. You fully reduce the ignorance, the root is still there. Therefore, the last, you need to practice the wisdom. The wisdom. Therefore, you know, we must go step by step with the three, the mind trainings. So next class, I will uh, uh, explain a little bit about the page number 109 till the 111. The for you as a homework. Please read about the generosity, perfection of generosity. Yes, uh, page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Within the practice of generosity, please everybody read the page seven until how to give. Okay, page seven, page number one one four till one to six. One to six. So next class, you know, we will discuss about the page seven, seven pages. So you read all the pages one by one and try to make a conclusion. Try to make a conclusion. The rest of the, I think six perfections, we must mainly go through, you know, simple conclusion. Then we will spend more time about the wisdom. Okay, so we can stop here today class, today lessons. So we can have a time for question and answer. So you can ask question related to uh, today class. If you have any question, you know, about your practice, any doubt, you know, you can be free, feel free and ask question. Thank you. Hello, okay, everyone. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, you can either message us or you can raise your hand. Anyone? What? Shine. <laughs> okay, then let me, maybe I, I, I'll start the question first. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Kishila, uh, my question is, um, I mean, I mean, spoke about a lot on the six perfection you should introduce just now. Mm -hmm. uh, why is there a, a, a lack of, um, what do you call it, a lack of um, teaching for the, the other four perfections in the ten perfections? Yeah, the rest of the four perfections also include into six perfections, mm -hmm. right? What is the perfection of the aspiration? Aspiration and prayers. Yeah, aspiration. Then what are the next uh, last four? Uh, skillfulness. 
expressionate prayers, yeah. power, discriminatory uh, wisdom. Yeah, all of them. When you look, you know, uh, the actual the meaning, also it in, in, include into the six perfection. The rest of the four perfection is mainly to use to uh, uh, bring other closer to you. Yeah, six, six perfection. So the rest of the the last the four perfection. Because what you when you're asking, someday you can see six perfections. Someday you can see in different texts are ten perfections. Paru the chimpa ju. So the last the four perfection also include into six perfections. Because he, uh, you can see you know at, at the uh, end of the six perfection. In order to achieve liberation, in order to achieve Buddhahood, in order to achieve, you know, the, the good life, you need to practice six perfection. You need only six, not more, not less than. If you detail less, it cannot be complete. If there are some more than six, it becomes very unnecessary. Therefore, yes, the last four perfections also, you know, uh, include into six perfections. Okay, Vishila, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we have a question from Joey. I will just read the questions from her. Uh, the question is, uh, if we cannot do meditations, uh, it means we, uh, it means we continue to have a destructive mind. So our mind will go around two factors, which is uh, attachment, and then, uh, so what is the other factor actually? Uh, so Joey want to clarify, uh, what is the other two factors that our mind go towards or chase after, uh, up, um, beyond attachment? What is the other factor? Actually, the mainly I think, Attachment, because I think, uh, so we can explain next time. Here say, you know, we cannot be transcendent from samsara. We really cannot have a progress in our dharma because mainly attachment. Attachment with the, our belongings and attachment, the place where we live. Mainly we have a lot of destruction because of the attachment. Attachment is look like, you know, the oily paper, oily paper. If the paper is very oily, you cannot write anything on it, it's too oil. So attachment is look like oily on the paper, yes? When we do meditations, one is the destruction because of attachment. Second is because of the uh, laziness, Physically become lazy, mentally become lazy. Physically become tiredness, mentally become laziness. Therefore, you know, when we do meditation, generally, the first step, we need to reduce attachment. In order to reduce the physical tiredness, physically tired, tiredness, I think we need to control our food. Food. Sometimes, you know, taking food is, is become very important. Since you just do meditation, you become sleepy. That means you have a physical problems. Therefore, Generally, before you do meditation, do light exercise, or you know, take very light food, then you won't have the physically tiredness. Yes, physically you are capable to do meditation, you don't feel so tired, you don't feel sleepy. Then when you, when we really actually, you know, focus on something, our mind cannot be stay on the chosen object. It is move, it move everywhere because of the excitement. The excitement because of the attachment again. Yes, 
mainly due to the attachment, due to the habituation, we cannot do meditation. In order to do meditation, the proper meditation, we need to think about what food we should eat, what food we should not eat. Therefore, in the, uh, you know, many Buddha teachings mentioned, you know, you should not eat garlic because it makes you very sleepy. Because you, you should not eat, you know, like a very heavy food, like a meat, also you feel very sleepy. Yes. Then also always practice the essenceless. It reduce attachment. Yes, you know, cannot do meditation can be attachment, can be physical condition, can be habitu habituations. We need to know which one is really, you know, become obstacle to you. Next question, please. Okay, Pashila. Um, is there any questions from anyone at the moment? Okay, if there's no question. Uh, oh, there is one, sorry. The, sorry, there's yeah. one from Sui Kim, sorry. Yeah, Kishi, uh, Kishila, can Sui Kim ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, Sui Kim, where's your camera? Okay, never mind. Okay, so you can please uh, unmute your mic. Is there any food that causes excitement? That's one. And uh, the other question that I have is, uh, you said all the Buddha Dharma can be subsumed under the six perfections. But what about things like tantras and all that? How do you subsume that under the six perfections? Two practices. Okay. Thank you so much for asking the question again. I think, yes, uh, there's no particular food to cause excitement. The food mainly cause to have uh, the dizziness and the, uh, the sleepy mind. But drink, like alcohol, is a particular cause to have uh, excitement. Because you can see some of your friends, usually he or she is very quiet. He or she don't talk too much, very quiet, talk very little. Since he or she, you know, start to drink alcohol, then the person talk loud, talk too much. And the person have so many kind of thoughts come in their mind. Yes, therefore in the Buddhist tradition, taking you know the alcohol things are no good when you do meditation yes the drink can cause excitement most of the food food can be caused to have a the lazy body body become very lazy and you feel very sleepy very very quickly yes then for the tantrayana because so we had to uh, know the Tantrayana practice. You know, visualizing the deity, visualizing the merit field, you know, doing the, the protections. Those are the precondition. It's a, it's a pre-practice of the actual the Tantrayana. In the Tantrayana, mainly there's only two practices. Practice of uh, completion stage no, also, I cannot remember one. Here, yeah, generation stage and completion stage. Complete stage. So when you study uh, two of them very precisely, then you will notice most of the Tantrayana practice is a very profound the meditation stage. Mostly include practice of the wisdom and practice of the mindfulness. And also with, within the Tantrayana practice, you know, giving and taking, giving your body into the, the spirit, 
practice of generosity. Also in the Tantrayana practice, the ethical discipline is very, 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 very important. Therefore, many people think, you know, when you practice the Tantrayana path or Tantrayana, you think, oh, I no need to practice the ethical discipline. I can do whatever I want. Because when you look at the picture of the, all the CDs, you can see, you know, they are taking many different food, they are taking different drink, their action is so, uh, you know, different. Yes, appear to like that. Actually, they fully control all the, the negative thoughts, control anger, uh, anger, attachment, desire, everything they transform into path. Therefore, yes, all the Tantrayana path, Tantrayana practice can be included into practice of six perfections. When you, when you, pack, when you open the Tantrayana books, it didn't mention particular the six perfections, but it's still there. Yes, this is an answer for you. Okay, thank you. So the next question is, uh, what are the criteria for the six perfections to become perfect? Uh, is it uh, just through realization of emptiness or the arising of Pachichita become the, the, you know, the, gate, the gate for you to, 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 to see that the six perfections has been perfected? Okay, the, also the practicing Buddhichita also include into six perfection. In order to complete the, the six perfection become very complete practice then wisdom is very important. Wisdom which relies emptiness is very important. Then how? So practicing generosity is talking about you must generous. You be generous, you know, without attachment. When it, whatever you give, you're talking about non-attachment. That means when you give something to someone, you must realize emptiness of the giver. Emptiness of the thing which you which is you going to give. Also, you must realize the emptiness of the recipient. That means you know the object, the things, kind of the subject, the person who going going to give. Again, the object, the thing going to receive the uh, the person who going to receive. So when you practice generosity, you must give thing non-attachment to the recipient, non-attachment to the giver yourself, non-attachment the thing which you are going to give it. Yes, in order to complete the six perfection, the wisdom is very important. When you practice ethical discipline also, yeah, the wisdom is very important. Therefore, you know, Lama Tsongkhapa's analogy is, we thought complete the eyes, the painting cannot be that complete. Without the wisdom, the rest of the five perfections are they look like the blonde person. They have a physical body, they look very nice, but they cannot see things as it is. Yes, this means, you know, the bodhicitta, also include into six perfections. Within the six perfection, wisdom is very important. Without wisdom, the rest of the five practices cannot be complete. Here you must remember at the beginning said, you know, we must put effort into the right path. Not just right path, the path must be very complete. Right? That means in order to achieve Buddhahood, we need to practice Buddhist, uh, great compassion, as a seat. Then Buddhichita is the cause. Then six perfections is a kind of comp components. Right? That means we meet, we must put effort into the complete causes and condition for achieving Buddhahood. Therefore, wisdom is very important to complete the six perfections. Yes. Next okay, question, 
Thank you. Okay, so last next question. Uh, the next two questions are regarding uh, jo um, enthusiasm. So the first question is how how do one generate enthusiasm, and how to sustain this kind of spirit of being enthusiastic? Okay. For example, when we attend teaching, right? When we so when while we are listening teaching, while we are attending teachings, we have a very strong enthusiasm to doing good things for others, doing good things for yourself. We have a very strong enthusiasm. Then after teaching, then maybe after 10, 20 minutes, one hour, two hours, then we have a, oh God, about, you know, the, 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 the enthusiasm, enthusiastic mind. Because that enthusiasm, enthusiastic mind, we had, you know, while we are teaching, because mainly inspired by the, uh, the teacher or the guru or the teaching, just inspire. It not come by our own effort. And also sometimes when you see someone become, someone very enthusiastic about something, also we become very enthusiastic inspired by others. All the enthusiasm we, enthusiastic mind we have is, is just arise by immediate condition. Therefore, this kind of, you know, is a split we cannot keep continuously. It arise for a while, then disappear. It's not the, the frame kind of enthusiastic mind. In order to have, you know, the stable enthusiastic mind, is, it must come from our own effort. Even the bodhicitta is come, must come from our own effort, not just listening from teaching, not just you know uh, uh, saying by our teacher. It must come from our own effort. In order to help the enthusiastic by our own effort, again we need to contemplate the benefit, the, the, the consequence of having the enthusiastic mind. Also, we must remember the faults, the lost, you know, not having the enthusiastic mind. If everything comes from your own effort, then the spirit is always can remind, can, you know, uh, maintain within you. Therefore, everything must come from your own effort by contemplating the benefit and loss. Otherwise, everything just, you know, arise for a short moment, then no more there. Particularly, you know, any our practice, practices should not arise based on become very emotional, emotional. Because you can see somebody, when somebody explain about impermanence and death and suffering of samsara, certain people, you know, really, you know, cry. You can see the tear come out. Those are mainly inspired by teaching, inspired by others, or become very emotional. Those kind of spirit or those kind of mind can stay for a short time. Therefore, the best, you know, study gradually and contemplate for many times and try to come from your own effort despite you know what the master said what the teaching said but must come from your own effort then you can have a very stable enthusiasm enthusiastic mind or you can have a very stable enthusiastic mind yeah does mean come from your own effort. Okay, Krishna, thank you. Uh, so the next so question is... Here, do you remember when we study about, study of Bodhicitta, Bodhicitta can be arise from different condition, other condition, right? Hearing, seeing, reflecting, the most the stable is, must come from your own effort. Okay, thank you. Next question, please. Um, so Kishla, the next question is a follow-up again on the enthusiasm. 
So one of the main thoughts of enthusiasm is actually laziness. Uh, so it's a, a direct problem towards enthusiasm. Uh, can Kishila share about the three types of laziness? Uh, I mean, roughly to describe and share about the three types of laziness. Um, yeah. Three types of laziness? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, the first one is actually uh, laziness towards uh, being attracted to a, uh, something which is uh, bad actions. Like uh, you know, uh, watching TV and you now constantly being attracted to something, so you kind of forget and distracted, uh, become lazy on that. Second one is about uh, laziness is pertaining to uh, being uh, procrastination. Just keep waiting and waiting and telling yourself to wait and you not know, wait for another day to do certain things. So second type of laziness. The third type of laziness is pertaining to uh, kind of self denigrating. That means uh, looking down at yourself and think that I cannot do it. No, this is not good. I'm not good enough. Or you no, know, so become very lazy and stop being enthusiastic about Dharma practice. Yeah, we call it, uh, yeah, yeah, you are told, it's not, uh, okay, this is actually, yeah, in English they use, uh, translate as a laziness. Uh, we typically, we call yid look. Yid look means, first you have a thought to do, then it's become very loose. Yid look. That means, chawang ajeng ye le lo, Yeah, that's me look at. Uh, so when we practice Dharma, then suddenly, you know, you have uh, so many things to do, like watching TV, texting here and there, with the worldly activities. It's also kind of, you know, laziness. Then look at now, you can see when we say laziness, it cannot be really the right. Trump, we can we can use it. We can say, you know, losing the aspiration, <coughs> losing the aspiration. <coughs> you have a strong aspiration to practice something. Then suddenly your mind has uh, so many things to have to be done, like watching TV, texting. It's become the, you know, uh, it's become uh, it's become uh, bad condition for your aspiration to practice Dharma. Number one. Number two, you have a strong aspiration to practice Dharma. Then you thought, oh, today I'm very busy. Today I'm very busy. I will do to tomorrow. Then you postpone the timing of practicing Dharma for tomorrow. So tomorrow come, can. Then you thought, oh, again. I'm today very busy. I will do tomorrow. It's, it's kind of you know, laziness. You can say laziness. We call you know the postpone the timing your dharma practice. Then chawang ajinge lelo, yilu bengelo, chawang ajinge lelo, yilu bengelo. Third, I cannot remember English. Yeah, this is kind of. Uh, I'm I'm not saying laziness. Yes, English, you, they use laziness, but Tibetan, you must remember the word yid look. Yid look. Yid look means there's a very important meaning. For example, when you walk, when you walk, walk for, you know, like you need to walk for many days to reach somewhere. When you walk, walk, walk suddenly you enter your knee. There are some muscles, right? This is your knee, and then there's a lot of muscles. If your muscles become very loose, then you cannot walk continuously. You need to take a rest. Therefore, the muscles have to be very healthy. If the muscles is very healthy, then you can walk for many days, your many years without you know stopping, without resting. That means the, the muscles are look like a strong aspiration to practice dharma that means it's not laziness we call you know losing the aspiration losing the motivation because you have a motivation suddenly you have a, a lot of worldly activities then you cannot you know the aspiration no more there then postpone you know time tomorrow next year after next year those are not laziness but it's become 
obstacle to practice the Dharma? Yes, this answer for you. And next question, please. Okay, uh, next question from C. Uh, C, please answer question. Tashi, uh, uh, I'd like to ask, right, would continue being doing good and not bothering which realm to enter enable us to be considered non-Buddhist? Can you repeat the question, please, again? Would continue doing good and not bothering which realm to enter enable us to be considered non-Buddhist? Doing good continuously, then? Yeah. And not uh, carrying which realm to enter. Which like realm? Yeah. human realm, there's the Buddhist Sattvas, mm -hmm. there's the um, mm -hmm. Samsara, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, the next one? We'll, if we don't care about it, will we be considered non-Buddhist? Uh, actually, look at So, I think a few weeks ago, I said, we have only three kinds of happiness to wish to achieve. One is the samsari happiness. Second is the liberation. Third is the Buddhahood. Yeah. In order to have a samsari happiness, you don't have to be Buddhist. Be a good person. Always do good things. You can be happy in samsara. You can have a happy life. In next, you have a happy life in next life. You no need to be Buddhist. Even though you are Buddhist, you know, you don't care which realm you go, going to enter. You do good things. You can be Buddhist or you cannot be Buddhist. Mm -hmm. You cannot differentiate. Oh, as a Buddhist, you must, you know, you, you must think about which realm you're going to enter. Because the, the the good the good consequence the good result is always depend on the good condition or good causes you doing good things every day you have a lot of good causes condition have a good things therefore yes whether you are buddhist or non buddhist if you do good things the, the good result always there even though you are Buddhist, when you do good thing, you no need to you no need to think about which you know realm I enter, because you just put you know good effort for the causal condition, the result will be always there. The second, then achieving liberation, achieving Buddhahood, then you know the person had to be Buddhist, achieving you know good human life achieving you know the samsara happiness you don't have to be buddhist you don't no need to follow even the buddha dharma buddha teaching yeah okay mm -hmm. yes please thank you Desh Keshara. Mm -hmm. okay Keshara, we have no more questions mm -hmm. okay no more questions right yeah yes no more questions okay. for the day uh, a uh, few minutes. So we were somebody asking question of meditation. Also, I think somebody, I think everybody has a problem when you do meditations. Look at our mind is look like water in a container, in a cup or in a in a. Our minds are look like water in a containers. So before we do meditation, before the meditation, before the meditation session, so we have uh, so many activities, physically, mentally, we have uh, so many activities. So our body, speech, you know, the general mind is look like content, so container. So, so before the meditation, we have uh, so many thoughts. So you really shake the container for, you know, continuously. When you stop shaking the container, moving the container, you stop 
moving, but you, when you look at the water, you can see the water, water is still moving, moving here and there. There's a web, there's a moving water in the container. How come? Because you stop moving the container, the water is still moving. Just keep continuously, you know, sh should not move the container continuously, keep for, you know, like 10, 20 minutes. Then slowly you can see the, the water become very calm. Funnel, no movement, no way. water is very, you know, stable, become very, very, you know, calm. Exactly the same thing. Before we do meditation, before the meditation, we have uh, so many activities. You think about what you should do in the morning, afternoon, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, next year. You know, we talk too much, we text here and there. We have uh, so many activities. When you start to do meditation, yes, you're physically, you are there. You have a mind to do meditation, but the thought is always arising continuously because of the water is still moving in the container. Then please don't worry at the beginning, you cannot focus. Your mind cannot be very calm. Don't worry, still just be relaxed. Be relaxed how to have a less thoughts, but still the thoughts will come. Thoughts will come. Don't worry, still you continuously, you know, focus on a, a object. Then slowly I told you, you know, the water is slowly become very calm, finally very calm, exactly the same thing. So every day before you do meditation, first important, you have to sit physically very comfortable. If your question is too soft, you feel very uncomfortable. If the question or the chair is very hot, also you feel you know, a bit uncomfortable, you sit very comfortably. And also the temperature also must be the right, not so cool, cold, not so hot, hot. You need to check the temperature. Then should not keep your, your you know, mobile or laptop around you. Everything just, you know, you must stay away from them. Then at the beginning, please you do your you know, consultation about your breath. First, you just, you know, focus on the breath about your nose, in and out. Then slowly you focus the you know breathing from your heart around lungs and the mouth, nose between here. Then very importantly, sometimes you need to stop. Just stop. Don't you know ex and inhale, just stop. Stop. Then again you you know. Continuously you do uh, focus on your breath in and out. Then your breath, not only just bring out your nose and you know, lungs, bring down around your belly, belly button, around your belly. Then you just breathe from, exhale from your belly all the way to your nose. When you inhales, also you inhale all the way to your belly and stop in your belly the breath you must stop around your belly clear then again you exhale inhale bring further down further down or oh, is open i will say you know as a male and female you just bring your breath all the way to your private parts all the way down Breathe from here, bring all the way down. Exhales from there all the way to your nose and tongue. Then also you must stop, you know, around your pelvic parts. Just stop and hold the breath around there. Then you can feel it, you know, or your mind become very calm. Very calm. Then once your mind become very calm, then you should not be just happy there, okay? You must slowly, you change your focus. 
on something. Until now, we fully focus our breath. Then slowly you shift, change the focus, slowly, generally, you know, practicing impermanence, compassion, tolerance, bodhicitta, then you can do very easily. Otherwise, before the meditation, your mind is very busy, physically very active, active. Suddenly you just do meditation or compassion, you cannot. If you are very tan, if you are really have a good training, you can go directly. As a beginner, first go through your breath. Right? Then some, some may you think why it is important to focus your breath. Because if your breath becomes very calm and gentle, then your mind becomes very gentle and calm. Because there's a very, you know, very deep um, connection between your mind and your, your breath and wind. So, whoever do meditation, first sit, you know, very comfortably, physically, mentally, be relaxed. Then, focus on your breath from just, from, from nose all the way to your, like a, you know, throat, between here, here. They bring down all the way to your lungs, around the heart, and stop, and exhale. After exhale, suddenly you stop, stop. Then again, inhale for a few times, and stop. Control the breath. When you control your breath, you have to be relaxed, physically relaxed. Should not be very agitated. When you feel agitated, you must release. They bring down all the way to your belly. In or out, inhales, ex, and hold on your belly for short time. And exhale. After you fully exhale, you must stop. Don't inhale again, stop as much as you can. When you stop to, when you stop breathing, you feel very agitated. When you feel agitated, also you must breathe in very gently. They go all the way to, you know, your private parts around there. Then you just feel from here all the way down here, here, you know. Then also you need to stop. You need to do this exercise until you favor very, you know, physically, feel very pleasant. When you are physically feel, you know, very pleasant, then slowly you change the focus. You know, should not change very fast. Change very slowly. And then you enter into your actual practice. Here you no need to worry about the, you know, the excitement, you know, the true or the obstacle. So then next, when your meditation become more profound, more deep, when your meditation become very deep, then you need to, you know, uh, concern about the excitement and the, the two obstacles of the, the mindfulness. At the beginning, you don't worry. Okay? So this is uh, a Today, our, you know, the end of the, our today lessons. So, at the end, we do the dedication prayers or dedication, do the dedication. So, this is the month of the Dharma Chakra days, Dharma Chakra month, you know, training wheel of Dharma, first time in the Varanasi by Buddha Shakyamuni. So, we celebrate, uh, day, uh, I think, day before, right? Do people yesterday I forget anyway. So during the our celebration, you know, we have a more than 80 candle lights. We have a, around 70 the orchid flowers and a lot of fruits. Everything we set up here due to the contribution of your your contributions.
your friends or your relatives, your co-workers. So we, everybody really rejoice and appreciate the people who really, you know, contribute to have a, this kind of offerings. And also must remember, when you contribute, you contribute the money, the physical thing. When we set up, you know, all the offering, we can set up only the physical things. The physical things, the money, the physical things, the flower, the incense, the candle can last for very short. But most important, you must rejoice yourself. Also, we must rejoice for other, you know, their contribution. Then the non-physical, you know, the dedication, the merit, the action can be remanded for many eons. Therefore, so important to do the, the dedication. Also, so important to rejoice yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to, you know, contribute the money to have all this offering. Because you remember, so we have the, uh, the resource we have, like house and car or food and clothes. Everything we have, because in our previous life, you know, we were very generous, we practiced, gener we practiced generosity, that's why we have the resources. If you're just enjoying our you know, resources we have, we will, we're not going to do more, you know, practice of generosity, then, you know, our resources are going to be end very soon. Therefore, we continuously increase the condition of our resources. Therefore, it is so important to do the dedications, also so important to do, rejoice yourself and rejoice for others. Therefore, you know, first we did get the merit of becoming Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Becoming Buddha is not that easy. We cannot achieve Buddhahood, you know, within what one lifetime. We need to practice the path, the teaching continuously for many eons. Therefore, we need to dedicate the merit to have a long and healthy life, all the lineage gurus. So in order to practice the Dharma for many eons, many lifetimes, also is depend on our components, our friends, our relatives. Therefore, please dedicate the merit to benefits to all sentient beings, particularly uh, the people who live around you. At the end, also dedicate the merit, the people, the family, the group who always, you know, contribute or who always support to sustain the TBC. Because uh, TBC is, I think, one of the very important Buddhist center to benefit to many peoples. Because we, through TBC, you know, we have, we have been receiving teaching from one of the most important teacher the 14th Dalai Lama. Then we have a many you know, other teachers who come to TBC, give a teachings, who are going to give a teaching through web, like our Zoom. Therefore, please dedicate the merit to benefit all the supporters of TBC. Particularly right now, you know more than me, you know, there's a really serious intention between in the South China Sea, between US and China, something happened, there will be a big bet and the consequences will happen all over the world. Therefore, please dedicate the merit to reduce the intention in South, in South, South China Seas 
should I see between, you know, like uh, different countries. Jidayambe Matu Muge Bupa Gunji Ne Tsiri Ne Me Diki Dembo Shou Changju Senju Rinpo Che Ma Ye Pa Nam Ye Gyo Ye Wa Nyan Pa Me Pa Yang Kwa Ne Kwa Ndo Pe Wa Tung Nyi Ta Wa Rinpo Che Ma Ye Pa Nam Ye Gyo Ye Wa Nyan Pa Me Pa Yang Kwa Ne Kwa Ndo Pe Wa Jan Pa Pa Yin Chi Tara Kim Pa Ta Kwa Ndo San Pa Te Yang Te Che Deda Gunge Jesu Dalos Gewandi Da Tanje Ratu So thank you so much for attending the Lamrim class and I hope you know you really can have a, a good progress in your practice, in your study your progress in make sure is not depend on the of my class, 10% depend on me, 90% depend on your effort, 90% depend on your own effort. Therefore, please everybody, when you have a free time you know, to study Dharma, to only study, please practice Dharma, try to have a happy life yourself, try to have a happy life with the people who live around you. And thank you so much. And I have a happy study.